Good morning, y'all. What's going on back here? Thanks for stopping in and checking us out. I hope you are excited as I am slash was about this whole process, this video. Today we're going to be talking about doing a whole pig. And that's exactly what I did. It wasn't as hard as I expected it to be. Uh, it was fun. Uh, I don't think that... Um, it was. Just, I, I made a little bit more out of the whole process than what needed to be, uh, but you know now I feel special. And you know what they say: you're nobody until somebody kills a pig for you. So shout out to my man out on Holly Hills Farms for uh, getting us a great hog, um, and setting the precedent for uh, not expecting the flavor profile smoky flavor flavor profile of uh you know like a pork butt or you know a shoulder or something like that he said you know you're not going to get all that smoke because you know there's a lot of skin that's going to protect that meat and uh so he set that precedent so i wasn't disappointed going in but you know if you love pork uh that taste was outstanding uh, one other thing that I know that I didn't talk about because after a while I was just trying to make sure that I focus on getting everything done the right way is I didn't really show you me probing it and temp went all that good stuff. Um, I didn't temp for like the first nine or ten hours or so. After that, went in by the hams and uh, had the probe sitting there. Sorry, butter's out here hanging out with me. Doing a couple brisket flats, one for a friend and family. I don't know if I said that. Or not. I'm not rewinding this take, but um, yeah, we've been out here for a couple hours, so we're kind of getting a little stir crazy. You know, I need a hot beverage, some tea or something, and he probably wants to go ahead and have some breakfast. Anyway, uh, I didn't probe for temp like I normally would with a butt or what have you. I really heavily relied on uh, feel. So I'm doing this because that's exactly, you know, what I did. Same hole, but, you know, I just kind of felt around. And, you know, once it started sliding like butter, you know, I went ahead and stopped feeding it logs and, you know, let it start doing its thing. But grand scheme of things, uh, it's, it peaked out the temperature at about 193 or so. And so I'm glad that I didn't try to pump it up. Uh, you know, to around 200 or so, because I think that would have been a huge mistake. Anyway, going forward, I think I'll do it again. Uh, like my grandma used to say, you know, Lord, let me live and nothing happen. Uh, you know, we'll be trying this again uh, and make it a more routine thing. You know, maybe a once a year type of thing. Maybe not with such a big pig if I'm going to be doing it all the time. Uh, and, you know, I'll try a couple of different uh, methods, scoring the skin maybe, and, uh, he suggested maybe taking skin off uh, within a couple hours of the cook being done. I might try that. So, hope you guys are excited. I'm very excited. I know that was a huge ramble, but I wanted to get it out of the way because I don't think that I had that much information outside of the initial uh, video that I took, you know, a little while ago. So, if you have any questions, let me know, obviously. But thanks for watching. It was fun. It's the intro. D's cute, it's the intro. It's time to eat, it's the intro. D's cute, it's the intro. What time is it? It's time to eat! Daddy, maybe you should stick to cooking. Alright, let's go eat. Alright, what's up, back viewers? We're uh, just kind of getting a close up here on a few things. Uh, if you read the title, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to put in the title, I'm smoking a pig. Up in that pig, we're going to put a lot of apple juice uh, marinating. Uh, Going to keep the brine basic, brown sugar, salt, cloves, so on line where a lot of people use cloves for this sort of thing. I don't normally use cloves, but I figure if other people do it, why not give it a shot? Some black uh, peppercorn, uh, grill mates. I love their uh, marinade mixes, man. They're off the hook. A couple, uh, couple onions, some garlic, a lot of, this whole bag should have got more probably. I'm gonna cut them in half, juice them, and throw them in there. And of course, you know, a lot of apple juice. Pulling out the sharp knives today. Uh, keep those in their own containers away from everybody. And, um, you know, we're gonna pull out the pig here. All right, now, 
my assistant is gonna come get the camera. Sorry, y'all. She kind of wandered off. Would you say we're possibly gonna name this thing? Priscilla. That's Maybe Priscilla. All right, we'll vote on it. I like the name Priscilla. It might stick. So give me a second. I'm gonna pause this, and then we're gonna come back and I show off the pig. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just simply cutting through. Ah, I said simply, but nothing's that simple, right? The chest cavity here, uh, I'm not going to butterfly it or spatchcock it or, you know, anything like that. I'm just opening it up uh, so that when I put it in my reverse flow, the airflow will be a little better. So what we do, open up that chest cavity. Get your hands down in here. Break it off. Break it open. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You want to hear that crunching sound? Because that is the rib separating, allowing the uh, cavity to stay open a little wider. It doesn't go back up into that fetal position. I'm pretty much not going to do a whole lot with this pig. Wow, something ripped my glove. <sighs> yeah. Alright, so after this, we're going to toss him in the cooler, let it brine for. I'm slipping. It's going to be less than a day because I'm cooking it tonight around midnight. But I'm going to toss that brine, the mixture on it, apple juice, throw a couple more bags of ice on there to make sure it stays cool uh, within a safe temperature. Squeeze those oranges in there and we're going to call it a day. Um, actually, you guys have seen this on videos, cooking videos a thousand times. I'm going to go ahead and take off some of the silver skin as well. I'm not going to show you guys that because you've seen it. Um, and that's just simply going to allow the rub that I put on before I cook a chance to seep into the meat a little bit more. I thought about leaving it so that uh, it will retain moisture since this is my first time. But you know what? We're just going to go for it. We're going to go for flavored meat instead of moisture meat. Uh, so, wish me luck. These are aggressive. Aggressive little bees. Alright, so we just rinsed him down. You know, blood starts to pull when it gets a little warmer. So we need to uh, go ahead and hurry up and get this thing back in the ice. Uh, for the good of the cause, with it being kind of warm out here, this is the best that I'm going to do. I exposed some of the meat. Uh, you can see the cracked rib cage down there at the bottom. And uh, yeah, let's bathe him. All right, final look before I add all the ice and set him down for the night until I start cooking him. That's, uh, that's the pig, y'all. So you'll notice I didn't really talk about any measurements or anything like that. You know, I, my main measurement for something like this is just simply a lot. I'm about to wheel this over there, grab the bag of the ice from my wife when she gets back. Um, yeah, uh, I was I watched a couple of videos of a guy who uh, his catchphrase was, "If you ain't sneezing, it ain't season." So you know, just kind of take you know that word of advice. Uh, you know, when it comes to stuff like this, if you don't hear me mention any specific quantities, and you know, I was definitely sneezing, so uh, you know, we, we're good to go. So I'm gonna get this loaded up so that I can come out here and start it up around midnight, and uh, don't have to mess with too much. Clear our air, obviously, clear everything off. Have some wood up under there, and of course, you know, got the wood on the wood rack over there just in case I run out. So yeah, we're gonna get this going. I, um, I'm not going to check back in probably until tomorrow morning. I don't think I want to be fooling with this thing at, you know, midnight, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, stuff like that. So this will be my last little hurrah until you start to see a little bit of color on the pig. So, all right, y'all. One thing. Plan on, uh, I might end up using the, uh, perfect draft, to be honest with you. Um. I don't know. We'll see. But I plan on uh, cooking him between, uh, the recommendation was 
225 to 250 uh, from the gentleman I bought it from. You know, he said he's cooked probably two, three, four hundred pigs so far in his life. Uh, you know, he, he just cooks and that's what he does uh, in addition to running his shop. But uh, he said I should expect a cook time of around 12 hours. So that's why I'm getting up and doing it at midnight. That way I can allow for a little bit of extra time just in case it doesn't cook as fast. If it does cook on schedule, then I have a little bit of time to rest, you know, about three hours or so before people start to show up. So 250, that's the plan. All right, peeps. Oh. I'm going to be, just in case you're wondering or if you don't care, if you do care, uh, a place around here called Mr. Mulch. Mr. Mulch. Came in clutch because I wasn't stocking up on a lot of wood. Hold on, I'm taking the umbrella out right now. You guys can't see what I'm doing, but in the background. All right. I had a few sticks left, but not a whole lot. Uh, I stopped stocking it up because uh, my wife wants to move eventually and I'm, you know, wanting to move to, uh, you know, maybe in the next year or so. I don't want to be stuck trying to move a bunch of wood uh, for no reason. But Mr. Mulch, they kind of came through uh, clutch. They sell firewood uh, between 10% and 25% moisture rating. Other places around here uh, weren't, didn't really have a lot of seasoned wood. Now they only accept certain species of wood but the little caveat is they don't separate them so there might be ash oak uh, post oak cherry maple uh, apple and uh, there was another one i forgot what it was but you know it was like four or five different species of wood that you know could be out there in their pile at any given time all of them are pretty mild with the exception of oak. Oh, yeah, hickory was in there too, obviously. Um, all of them are pretty mild, uh, but um, except for, you know, hickory's a little stronger, oak is a little stronger, but they all work with pork, so no big deal. They, they generally work with almost anything that I cook anyway, so it didn't really matter to me. I'm just going to run it, try to uh, keep the fire as clean as possible so I have the smallest splits out of the stack that I could grab over here. I'm going to use my log splitter. Uh, I might bring the camera back if I'm bored enough and I <laughs> let y'all see me split a couple logs uh, to make them as small as possible because I want the fire as clean and to have it burn as clean as possible since I'm not running just one particular species of wood. Uh, so that's that. Uh, that. That is probably the most interesting thing that I've said this entire time so far. So, And I almost forgot that. You guys can tell that I suck at this. All right, I'm going away. See you guys. Appreciate you tuning in. We'll be back. It's about 11:20 p.m. Just a preheat. Trying to get all that cold, cold steel up to temperature. So I stuffed it full of logs and charcoal. So now we wait. Probably have about an hour. All of that will thin out. By the time it gets hot and starts breathing correctly. Hmm. There it is. It's on there. We're cooking. I'm kind of about 235. I'm going to hurry up and make this quick so I can get him cooking. Stop looking. So, just want to check in. All right, a little quick sneak peek at Priscilla. Put a little chicken on, a little tri-tip. But there she goes. Looking pretty good. Looking mighty fine. This is about 10 hours later, nine hours later. So, started, I got her on officially at one o'clock and it's about 10 o'clock right now. On the a.m. So we're making really good time. Yeah, 10 a.m. All right, we'll check back in. <laughs> Sorry, guys. There it is. All right, that is pretty much the final product. Uh, not much different from what you saw during the check-in. Um, I forgot that the footage. Uh, I had someone come uh, from Gusto Photos uh, come and do a and video. You know the event. And so, um, you know, a lot of the footage, you know, started switching over. I stopped taking, you know, pictures and stuff like that. But 
uh, for the most part, that was it. So there it was, folks. Uh, pulled it off. We uh, we broke it down. That was on the other camera. Uh, steam came out as soon as you puncture the uh, the skin, and uh, everything. You know, uh, it was so easy. It just came out. It was, and the bones were clean. It was crazy. Uh, had my little helpers out here. My Smurf, Smurf. Did you have, did you have fun helping with the pig? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Say a little louder. I think I'll. You have fun? Yes. There it is. And my baby girl. Uh, so we had everybody pitching in, and then the guys came after everybody came and pulled it, and uh, you know they chopped up everything and flavored it and seasoned it, you know accordingly. So it was a good time. Uh, we might do it again, and uh, might have uh, somebody come professionally uh start to finish i'm gonna keep that video to myself uh the one from this one but you know if we do it again uh we might see if we can get them out here at midnight <laughs> thanks for tuning in y'all take care